In this video, let's look at seven different types of lumps that can develop in your breasts and why they happen. Here in the UK, breast cancer is the most common type of cancer with more than 150 women diagnosed every day according to Cancer Research UK. And from the American Cancer Society, we learned that breast cancer was the second most common cancer worldwide in 2022. So while breast cancer is significant and not as rare as we would like, there are other causes of lumps that can happen in the breasts. Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Sylvia, a consultant in general practice. This is Ask Away Health. Please give this video a like and of course consider subscribing to the channel if health information just like this is what you're interested in. Regular breast examination is essential once a month, usually after a period for those who are menstruating. If you find a lump, of course your mind immediately worries about cancer and it's important to always have lumps in the breast checked out. So let us look at different types of lumps that can develop in the breast. But before we do that, a quick look at what the breast is made of. The adult female breast is made of different types of tissue, a lot of fat. Then you have glandular tissue, which contains cells that can produce or release different products. Some examples of glands that you will already be familiar with are sweat or salivary glands, thyroid glands and so on, which make sweat, saliva, thyroid hormone. Breast milk is the product from the breasts. The glandular tissue in the breast is divided into sections called lobes, which are further subdivided into lobules. There is also a network of channels or ducts that help transport the milk around the breasts called milk ducts. So how does all this work together? The milk is made in the lobules, which connect to the milk ducts that spread from the lobes towards the nipple. In addition, there's connective tissue and ligaments that support the breast. Here are some quick breast factoids. One of your breasts is usually slightly smaller than the other. That's normal. It's also normal for your breasts to feel a little different at different times of the month, which corresponds to your hormone balance at that time of your cycle. Just before your periods, for example, your breasts could feel quite lumpy. Age affects the composition of the breasts. Younger women have more glandular tissue than fat because they are more likely to be breastfeeding compared to older women. The women. More glandular tissue makes your breasts dense. For women who've been pregnant, you also know that the breasts change to become bigger and a bit tender when you're pregnant. By the time a woman gets to menopause and the periods stop, the breast tissue becomes more fatty, which is less dense. Being aware of these differences in breast density is useful for medical practitioners. For example, when it comes to your mammograms, it's one of the reasons that many places only offer mammograms after the age of 40 unless you have specific risk factors. This is because denser breasts, that is in younger women, make it more difficult for mammograms to identify any abnormalities. So now we know what's in the breast, let's take a look at seven or so different types of lumps that can happen. One, a breast cyst. A cyst is a fluid filled sac that can develop anywhere in the body, including breast tissue. They often result from hormonal changes during the menstrual cycle. And it's thought they happen when those milk glands we talked about fill with fluid. So they are a very common cause of a non cancerous, that is benign lump in the breast. You may get one cyst at a time, but multiple cysts can happen and both breasts can be affected. They could be small or grow to quite large sizes. They feel smooth and soft like a grape, but sometimes they can feel firm. Breast cysts can develop at any age, but more often we see them in women over the age of 35, around or before menopause, and sometimes after menopause in a woman who is taking HRT. We don't usually treat breast cysts, unless they grow to be very large, become painful, or even get infected or causing other problems. Most cysts will eventually go away by themselves. And once you have your diagnosis, there's nothing to worry about. Some people have cysts that come and go. 
Many times we cannot tell how long the cyst will stay before it eventually disappears. Number two is a fibroadenoma. This is another very common benign or non-cancerous condition that causes a lump in the breast. It can also develop at any age, but more often it's found in younger women and teenagers. Apart from feeling smooth, it moves around easily under the skin, earning itself the nickname the breast mouse. Sometimes, just before a period, you might experience pain around the breast from the fibroadenoma. We don't know precisely what causes fibroadenomas, but the hormone is estrogen may have a role. It is formed from tissue or cells growing over a lobule in the breast to form a solid lump. Now, there are different types of fibroadenoma. You may have a simple one where the size is about the size of a pea or between one to three centimeters or a giant fibroadenoma that grows to more than five centimeters and that type is common in pregnancy or when breastfeeding. If the fibroadenoma happens in teenage girls, we call it a juvenile fibroadenoma. But if you have more than one, then you're said to have a multiple fibroadenoma. Lastly, some women have something called a complex fibroadenoma that is different from the other four I've just mentioned. When you look at it under a microscope, some of its cells look different to each other. Now, having a fibroadenoma does not usually increase your risk of breast cancer, but the complex type may slightly increase the risk of developing breast cancer in future. So, if it's a fibroadenoma, after diagnosis with a scan or mammogram, you may need a biopsy, especially if you're over the age of 25. A biopsy involves taking small samples of the lump and looking at them under the microscope. Most fibroadenomas don't need treatment. You'll be asked to keep an eye on it to check if it's growing to keep examining your breasts and return to your GP if anything new develops. Surgery might be considered for complex, giant, or even juvenile fibroadenomas. It could be on the general or local anesthesia. Essentially, most fibroadenomas will stay the same size. Some get smaller and eventually disappear with time, but some can get bigger like we've said, and this is more common in teenage girls during pregnancy, breastfeeding, or in a woman who's taking HRT. Number three, PASH. The next cause of a lump which is benign in the breast is something called PASH. PASH means pseudo angiomatous stromal hyperplasia. And if you break all that down, it simply refers to an abnormal growth of the connective tissue around the breast. It's a common cause of a painless lump that develops in women commonly before menopause, though it can happen at any age. It's also thought to be related to hormone balance or imbalance issues. Now, the size of the lump itself can vary from one person to the other, but the diagnosis for this condition is often pretty clear after you've had a mammogram, a scan, and biopsy. PASH doesn't require any treatment. Often, you'll be asked to monitor the lump and come back to see your doctor if you notice any changes. Number four, let's talk about fat necrosis and lipoma. Fat necrosis is a benign condition that causes a lump if an area of fatty tissue in the breast is damaged. Often this happens during surgery, radiotherapy to the chest, after a biopsy, or following other kinds of trauma to the chest, for example from a fall or a seat belt injury. The injury leads to the death of fatty cells, causing the lump to form. Trauma itself can also cause bleeding into the tissues, and this is something called a hematoma, which can also present as a lump in the breast. If you have fat necrosis, you may feel firm, round lumps in the breast, which some people find painful, although it can be painless. The skin around the injured area and the lump may look thicker, red, darker, bruised. Sometimes it might even look dimpled or with the nipple pulled in. Now, these changes may cause concern that this is breast cancer. And of course, it's one of the reasons why it's important that all types of lumps have to be checked out by your doctor. So different tests as usual, including a mammogram, breast scan, biopsy, will help to determine the correct diagnosis. In the case of fat necrosis, no treatment is usually required. It's harmless, 
Usually your body will break it down, although this can take several months to happen. If the lump is getting bigger though, or you find any other changes happening in the breast, for example, a nipple discharge, please go back to your doctor to have it looked at again. While we're on the subject of fat, have you heard of a lipoma? This is a benign growth of fat cells that can happen anywhere in the body. So it could also develop in the breasts. No injury happens before it starts to form. Breast lipomas are usually small, painless, soft. They feel like lumps and they're lumps that feel like dough in texture. But if they are sitting or pressing on a nerve, they could cause pain. We don't know what causes them, but they may actually happen more often after there's been some injury to the breast or if you have a family history with conditions that are associated to developing lipomas. Again, these are harmless. They don't require any treatment, but if they're causing pain or they're going quite large and difficult to manage, they can be treated with surgery or a liposuction. Five is mastitis. Mastitis is a common cause of a painful lump in the breast that develops following an infection of the milk ducts and the tissues around it. Commonly, we have lactational mastitis, which develops in a woman just after having a baby, whether or not she's breastfeeding. And in this case, the milk ducts are infected. The lump is usually felt behind the nipple. The breast itself can be very painful, can feel hot, and the skin of the breast, especially around the lump and the nipple, can look red, bruised, or darker. Some women may also have a nipple discharge, and you might find their nipple is pulled in or inverted in some cases. When somebody has mastitis, they usually will have a high temperature in addition to some of these other symptoms. But mastitis could also affect anybody else unrelated to pregnancy or breastfeeding. For example, people who smoke are more at risk of mastitis because the chemicals in the smoke could damage the duct's behind the nipple, making them prone to infection. Smoking can also delay the healing process. Something else that can lead to infection of the milk ducts is having a nipple piercing. So we've looked so far at some common causes of breast lumps that are benign, though they can cause a lot of distress in many women. I'd also like to mention something I heard from someone recently called a breast fibroid. Let me know in the comments section if you've heard that term before. It's a term I've heard a few people use and it's a bit difficult to work out what they're talking about. First, in medical terminology, there is nothing like breast fibroids. Fibroids are benign growths of the womb. The causes of fibroids are not fully clear, but we know there's an element of hormone imbalance with estrogen and progesterone being mainly implicated. But there are other factors like your genetics, your age, your environment and environmental pollutants, your diet, and so on, involved in the development of fibroids. So of course we know that hormone changes can be related to several conditions in the breasts, such as fibroadenoma, cysts or PASH, which I've just been describing. But this does not mean that you have fibroids in the breasts. You can have fibrocystic changes in the breast, which means having fibrous tissue and cysts develop under the influence of hormone changes, but it is not the same as fibroids. And fibrocystic changes are often normal changes which could lead to lumpiness in the breasts. So let's go on. The sixth type of lump we're looking at today is the ductal carcinoma. So here we're looking at other causes of breast lumps and this is a type of breast cancer or malignancy. Cancer can develop around or in the milk duct. There is a non-invasive type that starts in the ducts and does not spread beyond the walls of the duct. This is ductal carcinoma in situ or DCIS. It's also known as early ductal cancer. DCIS can be asymptomatic and often is picked up during a routine test like a mammogram as part of the breast screening program. But a small number of people can develop symptoms which include, yes, you guessed it, a breast lump. There may also be a nipple discharge which could be blood stained or a red or darker scaly rash on the skin around the nipple. DCIS is mainly treated by surgery to remove an area of the breast or the whole breast. Some women may also benefit from hormone therapy. But there is also the invasive ductal carcinoma. This is IDC. It's also known as invasive breast cancer. 
It is the most common type of breast cancer. It begins in the milk ducts and then spreads through the lining of the ducts into the surrounding breast tissue. The symptoms of invasive breast cancer include the typical symptoms that we encourage you to monitor. So this can be a new lump or thickening in the breast or your armpit, a change in the size, the shape or feel of your breast, skin changes in the breasts, for example, dimpling, puckering or a rash, redness or bruising around the skin, a discharge or fluid leaking from the nipple of a woman who is not pregnant or breastfeeding, and there could be changes in the position of the nipple. Treatments of invasive breast cancer include radiotherapy, chemotherapy, surgery, hormone therapy, and other targeted cancer drugs. And that brings us to number seven, and this is called invasive lobular breast cancer. Invasive lobular carcinoma or ILC is the second most common type of breast cancer. It begins in the breast's milk producing glands, that is the lobules, and it can spread to surrounding tissues. It may not develop into a lump in all cases. Many women would instead describe a thickening in the breast with invasive lobular cancer. But other possible symptoms include the nipple turns inward, there may be skin changes like dimpling or thickening. While invasive lobular breast cancer can cause these particular symptoms, it's also worth being aware of the general symptoms associated with any type of breast cancer. There are other types of breast cancer, for example, triple negative breast cancers whose cells don't have receptors for the hormones estrogen, progesterone, and a protein called human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 and other less common types of cancer which could also cause breast changes including a lump. Hopefully this video gives a good overview of some causes of breast lumps and motivates you to check your breasts regularly and seek medical advice if you notice a lump or any changes in the breast so they can be checked out because you can see both benign and malignant conditions can present with a lump. Check out the amazing Dr. Tash here on YouTube who shares really useful information about our breasts and different conditions that affect the breasts. I'll leave the link to her channel in the description box. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and of course share with a friend. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, check out more health information videos on the playlist here and I'll see you again soon.